Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Erica Kramer and I am joined by Rob Fiore and today we are going to discuss infection prevention. I'm very lucky to be a part of the senior living team at Martin Brothers and I'm very lucky to get Rob Fiore with us. Rob is our solution sales manager or as I like to refer to him, he's our environmental services great poobah. So thank you for joining us today and teaching on this very important topic. First of all, we are live, so if we mess up, you will see it and that's okay. But I wanted to point that out because we have a thunderstorm going on. So it would be fitting and funny if there is a crash when we say something important. That's not on cue, this is live. So I just wanted to get that out there. Um, I wanted to thank you guys all for your hard work that you're putting in to take care of our seniors during this time. While we're still learning about COVID-19, one thing that experts do know is that seniors are the most vulnerable population to be affected. They are the ones that have the most complications and worse outcomes. So we know it's an incredibly stressful time for everyone and especially you and your teams if you're working in senior living. That being said, we also realize that there's an abundance of information coming from all different types of um, directions, making it a little difficult to absorb what's helpful, what's just overkill. Also, there's lots of restrictions coming down from CMS. If you're in senior living, that's nothing new, but these seem to be going really above and beyond what we're used to. But just remember that the goal of all these guidelines it really is to keep your residents safe as well as yourself. And that's our goal here at Martin Brothers as well. We're very passionate about this industry and the people that you serve, and we're doing everything we can to assist you in the safety and care for your residents. Okay, today. I didn't mention that yes. you were talking about senior living, but we'll be talking about things that apply to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> well, yes, Bill. So we have two people helping out today that are behind the screen. Angie Dark, our marketing manager, and Bill Pendry, he's like a marketing puma as well. I don't really know if you're going to we'll go with that. All right, so he's, we're going to be having help if you guys ask questions today. We will field them in real time, so please ask questions. If you have ideas to share, please do that as well. Infection prevention, like Bill pointed out, we are focusing um, a lot in the senior living, but it's a very important topic for any segment, especially during this time. Like or in public in general. Even if you aren't working anywhere right now and you're joining us at home, this is very important. In the senior living arena, um, it's a very high sighted area for sure in senior living communities. But now with the corona outbreak, coronavirus outbreak, it's even more important. Everyone listening, is part of a team that does an extremely important job caring for our seniors if you work in senior living. If you're joining us from that segment and you're on the environmental services team, you are a VIP right now. We need you to listen and reflect on how you're doing things. But we want you to be honest if you're doing these procedures we talk about correctly. So, are you doing things such as leaving the surfaces wet for that one or two minutes as the directions tell you to do? Or are you wiping it down just short of that mark? Are you really hitting the high touch areas or are you skimping? You have an important role in the safety of your um, team, of our loved ones, and of yourself. If you're joining us and you're not on the environmental services team at a senior living, but you are at a senior living or anywhere else, don't leave because we're going to be addressing all-encompassing topics as well. We all know that washing our hands is the number one way to prevent the, the spread and to keep yourself and residents safe. But are we really following correct hand washing procedures? Are we vigorously rubbing for 20 seconds? Or do we skimp ourselves and start to rinse as part of that 20 seconds? So, like I said, today it's just going to be making sure you're doing those little things that make a big difference. So we're going to be going over hand washing, like I said. We'll be discussing PPE, even though we know there's some issues with the PPE um, shortages right now. We're going to be talking about disinfecting, kill times, cough etiquette, uh, and a lot more. 
All so kinds like, of stuff. All, all kinds of stuff. So please ask questions. Please give us um, ideas if you're doing anything that's been helpful. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rob and let him share a little bit about his expertise and his background. My background, I've been, uh, I've been in this industry for almost 23 years. Prior to that, I was in the food service industry for another 14. So a uh, lot of exposure. at five. At five, yeah, <laughs> roughly. Child labor. Um, but today, today we're not we're not reinventing the wheel. Today we're going to go through how to drive that wheel so everyone's doing it correctly. All right. Uh, most of the, if not all, the practices are recommendations from the CDC, so we're going to be following them. There shouldn't be anything we say today as far as the recommendations that should be unfamiliar to you. We yeah. just want to clarify that we're doing it correctly. Okay. Um, I'm going to start by saying that this is this whole situation is serious. Okay, the safety of, of our, our residents, our customers, our families, ourselves, it's paramount. Okay. Um, I also want to point out we did just say that that seniors are the most vulnerable population, but they did come out today and say 20 through 54 of those ages, 40% um, of that population are the ones ending up in hospitals and nearly half in the intensive care units. So if you are in that age range and you think you're safe, you're not. You think you're invincible? You're not, yeah. No. So despite the seriousness, there might be times during this training where we might get a little lighthearted. Don't take that as we're taking anything about this training light. Yes. Sometimes it's just a way to, to kind of incorporate a little levity into the training process, okay? Uh, some of the things that we're really going to handle today, and you've heard them before, proper hand washing, okay? We're going to talk about PPE, uh, essentially about gloves more importantly than anything. Cleaning and, and specific disinfectants, kind of diving into those, understanding the, what the differences are. We're going to talk about high touch surfaces. We hear that a lot. What are the high touch surfaces? How do we properly disinfect them? Uh, we're going to talk about cough etiquette, cough and sneeze etiquette. And we are going to dine, dive into some dining room uh, cleaning and sanitizing, as well as some dish room uh, sanitation practices, okay? We also want to point out that if we refer to any resources today, that they will be available on the link um, on our B2B site. So um, if you log in to your B2B site with Martin Brothers, we have a very large colored box um, with the coronavirus link. You click on that. You will have access to see this um, this recording again, as well as if you missed us yesterday, we discussed communal dining and how to deal with those challenges. But you will also see all of the resources that pertain to each of those training sessions. So don't worry if you're wondering how you can get a hold of these. We will have them available for you. Okay. And throughout any of the training today, if you have questions, you have the ability to type them in there. Now's the time. Now's the time to get them out there. We we will be kind of sidebarring some of those for certain parts of the uh, the training. Uh, they might be answered immediately uh, by our our moderator. Uh, but you know, let's let's really make sure that we have some good questions coming in because everyone would would benefit from those. So. We won't use username or tell who it is. So if you're thinking it. Someone else probably is. All right, so let's let's start talking about hand washing. The CDC recommends washing your hands frequently, 20 seconds. That's pretty much their big guidelines. Mm -hmm. But do we all do it correctly? Okay, uh, I'm going to show a little graph here, or a little chart. Can you see it there? I'll put it up on the screen. Are you, Bill's going to put it up on the screen. So what we're seeing here is the commonly missed areas and frequently missed areas when people wash their hands. So that tells you that they're not doing it correctly, and I don't think most people do. So we are going to go through that today, but Eric is going to tell you how you can help train your staff with some simple things you already have around in your kitchen. So I think a lot of people are familiar with um, the black light. What do they call it? The glow bug? Glow bug, yeah. So it's uh, a purple dome, and then there's lotion that you have to put on before you wash your hands. You go wash your hands, and then you put it underneath the, the dome, light. and there's a black light. And it is supposed to um, 
basically shine on what areas you missed. So if something is fluorescent, those are the spots you missed. We used to have a couple of those kits that we would go around and help with end services on. But what I started to notice is that I would watch people wash their hands and they were not doing it correctly. Uh, I would watch them and think, ooh, this is gonna just be a fluorescent hot mess. And then they would go underneath and it would they go, see, I washed my hands correctly. And I'm just scratching my head going, but you did it for five seconds, 10 if you're lucky. So, um, we had a situation where we were supposed to use that and we forgot it at an education training and we were in another state away from where we hold these. So we were sitting here going, okay, we're gonna supposed to be doing hand washing for 30 minutes, what are we gonna do? And my coworker said, well, there is a hand washing for, or in service that uses cinnamon and oil. And ever since then, that is what I have stuck to. And every time we use this, um, this scenario and this in service, it actually impacts and has a lasting effect on the staff compared to what the uh, glow bug would do. So all you need is two things, well three, a sink and soap for hand washing, but all you need is oil, any type of oil, and cinnamon. It doesn't matter if you're a restaurant, if you're at home, if you're in a senior living community, chances are almost 100% you have these two items. Hey, Eric, can I interrupt you for a second? One of the things I forgot to mention as we start going into all these different things is now more than ever, it's important to call out your fellow yes. employees, your family members. If they're not doing this correctly, don't be afraid to call them out. If they come out and they didn't wash their hands or if they didn't disinfect properly, you call them out because this really is important. Thank you. Very true. Absolutely. And you can use humor but then correct them and be honest. You know, we're trying to keep everyone safe here. So what we will be posting as a resource is called, it, it's a hand washing, it's just hand washing, and it, like I said, is an in-service. Objective participants will demonstrate pro proper hand washing practices. I've done it a couple different ways. I have done it where everybody um, puts the oil on their hands, rubs it in, and then we sprinkle cinnamon and they have to show correct hand washing or I've done it based on the handout that'll be available. When you put the oil and the cinnamon on, the reason why I think this works better than the black light or, or anything else we've done is it is very hard to get oil off your hands and it is even harder to get cinnamon off your hands, especially when you've mixed it with oil. So the cinnamon is supposed to uh, represent germs or the virus and it does a really good job of sticking to areas that are hard to get clean like around your nail bed, like under your nails, like in the creases. So if someone um, doesn't do the best job of washing their hands, after they're done, they can smell the cinnamon and they can see it. They can visually see where they've missed. So I think it just impacts them and they go, oh, I didn't wash my hands good enough. So that smell and that sight of it really um, drives home the fact that you did or didn't do the correct thing. So if you follow what our handout will do, it has you pull four volunteers, which we have dug up today. And one washes their hands using no soap. Um, one washes their hands with no rubbing. One is washing their hands with cold water. And one uses proper hand washing. Today, we've kind of tweaked that a little bit. We'll have one person wash their hands for five seconds with soap. We're going to have one person wash their hands with no soap, but do correct time and vigorous rubbing. We will have one person wash their hands correctly. And we will have another person not wash their hands, but use what a lot of people use instead, which is hand sanitizer. And I can, we also have some, <laughs> some, some noises too. It's live. Um, I really want to stress the point that hand sanitizer, back me up, great Puba, is not a substitution for hand washing. That is correct. Ever. That is correct. When you have hand washing facilities that available, that would be the preferred thing to do. The hand sanitizer is there for a quick touch up after you touch something and you can't quite get to to go wash your hands, but it will not replace the effectiveness of good hand washing. So we're going to insert this as one of the practices we're going to try with correct hand washing just to show you what goes on when you use this instead of hand washing. 
So, here we go. Any Should demonstration? Go? Follow us. Is that Mr. Rogers or someone would be like, come with me and join us as we will be demonstrating washing our hands. We have Joe and Ernie joining us. Rob, which one should we do first? Let's do the five second wash. Okay. He wants to step right up and do a bad job of washing their hands. Ernie, okay. all right. So, your will have your face maybe. What's the best way, Bill? Let's have him go all the way. Let's so that's all right. Get that done. So like I said, you just get a little bit of oil. I'm just using a cap full. Rub that in, Ernie. Mm -hmm. Rub it on your other hand too, just so it's all good. And then I'm gonna sprinkle the cinnamon. These are your germs. Ooh, gross. So we have dirty hands here. I will turn it on for you. And just wash your hands like, oh, a five-year-old or the way my husband used to before he became an administrator. One, two, three, four, five. Red. All right. You can, you can dry them off. I'm going to use my dirty hands for the water. Let's see. Ernie, can you smell the cinnamon still? Yeah. Can you see? Let's show them. How does it look? Somewhere. All in the creases. What about your nails? How's your na all around the nails and in between? Kind of spread your fingers pretty wide. So we still got pretty good amount of germs on there. Gosh, Ernie, bad job. Next, <laughs> Joe. Which one's Joe's doing? Joe's no good. soap or no soap. soap. Okay, no soap. So we're gonna put the oil. If you want to put your hands out over the sink? We'll do oil, rub in the oil to both hands. Mm -hmm. Yummy. And I will say another added benefit of this, rub your germs in, dirty hands, is that your hands feel super soft afterwards. So after all of this hand washing we're doing correctly, it's nice to get those added oils. Mm -hmm. Hey, Eric, so, did you know they asked a lot of people why they don't wash their hands? Did you really? know what some of the things they said? What? Uh, they said uh, they're often too busy or don't have oh. insufficient time to wash their hands. They admitted that. That's not a thing, guys. Or um, hand hygiene interferes with healthcare workers' relationships with patients. Mm, Crazy, that, isn't it? That seems that, like you don't care about someone if you don't wash their hands more than anything. So we're going to have Joe do 20 seconds vigorous rubbing, like you're washing your hands correctly, but don't use any soap. So just rub those hands in, in between like you're rubbing before a surgery, Joe. And then Rob's our timekeeper. So he is counting off for 20 seconds. We all know this, but you can sing happy birthday as long as you're not singing it as fast as you can. You can do the ABC twice or once. ABC twice. 20 seconds. All right. You want to dry off your hands, Joe? Now, even though Joe did not use soap and Ernie did, he did the correct vigorous rubbing and the correct amount of time. Let's look at his hands. Joe's hands actually look better than Ernie's. Do you still smell it though? We can see some spots. Still smell the scent? A little bit. A little bit. So, we are definitely not saying to get rid of soap, but I think what we want to point out is, is that the, the scrubbing of the hands, the rubbing of the hands in the 20 seconds is just as important as that soap. That is the key part, guys. All right, next, we're gonna do what upsets me the most. We are just gonna use sanitizer. So Angie, let's get your hands germy. Dirty, gross hands. Let's add some germs and dirt and maybe the coronavirus. No, oh no. Here's a couple more uh, reasons why people don't wash their hands. And, and we're addressing this Come one today. Rob. Lack of knowledge of the guidelines or protocols. Well, they can't have an excuse now. Or skepticism regarding the value of hand hygiene. Can you believe that? Well, that's just, 
That just seems. That's crazy. And this this was actually in hospitals when oh, this survey was taken. Where hand washing um, is very important. Some key things, though, is um, sanitizer. The hand washing is the the soaps are are air and people are sensitive to them, so I can see where that would I, make them be a little more hesitant, but they still should still should do it. And um, I want to point out, if, if it is irritating your hands, that, I mean, we understand that. One of the things that could be causing that is not drying your hands completely. So there is an importance to making sure you do dry your hands completely. All right, so Angie's been rubbing her hands vigorously. She's also um, been going at least 20 seconds. Angie, do you smell cinnamon on your hand still? A little bit. <laughs> do, you, yes, do, you see, do we see any cinnamon on her hands? A little bit. So really, um, instead of getting rid of the cinnamon or the germs, we just kind of moved them around a little bit. Yeah. That's, that's all that kind of mm. happened. Like we said, you can use uh, alcohol as a way to, or the sanitizer, in conjunction. In conjunction, with but not hand washing, to replace it. But not to replace it, correct. All right, we are, you're going to, yeah, you can wash I'll do this for now. Okay. So can wash. Now we're going to have Rob demonstrate the correct way to wash our hands. So, I'm going to, and we're going to make sure that you guys don't think, well, they didn't put as much oil or, or dirt on Rob's hands. Wrong. A little bit of a disclaimer, too. You're going to have a dirty sink after this, but it will come off. We just want you guys to know. It's just that there will be some cinnamon. A little bit Gross. of, yeah, a little Gross. bit of stuff on there. All right. Will so you turn the water on? I will do that. All right. So, got my hands. And if anyone had parents who were traditionalists, they might have told you, like my mom did, that basically you have to have the water scorching hot in order to kill germs. Is that true, Rob? No. No. And it is also true that you do not have to have an antimicrobial soap. Ah. You prefer it, but it is the proper method of cleaning your hand is sufficient for removing and killing the germs. Okay. And if you're using the scorching hot water, and we just talked about skin irritation, that might be probably part of the problem as well. So. All right. Well, I think I've reached that 20-second mark. I think so. Chatty, you better be on that. Well, we get chatty Kathy in there. We do. We do. And don't forget, do not touch that sink and that faucet with your clean hands. You just defeated the purpose then. Oh! Can we smell them? No cinnamon. I'm going to smell them. Yeah. Smells like soap. Wow. Let's see how do they look. Probably wingspan them. Probably cleaner than they were before. <laughs> Looking good. Mm -hmm. All right. So once again, I'm gonna take. I'll just leave that here. Just a good way, like we said, to demonstrate to your team what the difference of hand washing does. Correct. I know that nobody can answer me, but I'm hoping that seeing what happens to sanitizer during this demonstration, what, I mean, we're not saying that if it's part of your policy or procedure to use hand washing after you exit a room, that you should do that. That's not our goal at all. We're just trying to stress the, the fact that hand washing shouldn't be replaced by just using a hand sanitizer. I've been in communities um, doing this in service, and we were wondering, this was years ago, why they kept having outbreaks of influenza, because it was only in October. Really shouldn't have had that yet, especially twice. And as we were doing it, someone, and usually you'll have someone who will be honest with you and be chatty, um, said, well, we don't have to wash our hands, and she pulled out her bedazzled sanitizer and said, we just use this instead. And after I puked in my mouth and swallowed it, I went and tattled on, the, on her to the DON. So anyway, like I said, after that, it's like we have to get it across to people, especially if you're doing direct cares. You cannot use sanitizer as a replacement. 
All right. Did we have any questions, guys, during our hand washing? Just to make sure. There was clarification on the 20 seconds because some have said that 15 was good, and everyone is going to agree in agreement that 20 seconds is what's recommended, and that's what we should stick to. And that's that's just a minimum. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, as we segue mm -hmm. from oh, hands... We had one other question. Okay. Would spraying hydrogen peroxide on the hands kill coronavirus? I have not heard that that would kill coronavirus. Um, hydrogen peroxide, like in the brown bottles, it's a 3%. It's a fairly low percent. I don't know if that would have the adequate amount in there to have a kill claim on it. And I would not base anything on that without having EPA saying, yeah, it'll work. So. We haven't, so the Great Puba has not seen it, no. so I would not trust it. There are some hydrogen peroxide disinfectants that are out there that have the claim, but straight hydrogen peroxide like you get in the drugstore, no. Okay. So. Thank you for the question, though. So, as we segue from hand washing to PPE, I want to go back to the, the reasons why people don't wash their hands, and one of them is wearing the wearing of gloves and belief that gloves use obliviates the need for hand hygiene so we put on gloves and now we've got super hands so i take my gloves and i put it on and everything is good rob do we think that is there a glove that washes itself in between uses hmm i've not seen that but right. if i could create that you i could retire that's right <laughs> um so anything that gets on this glove can be transferred to other surfaces, okay? This is this is PPE, personal protective equipment. It is used to protect the wearer of this particular glove, okay? Not to protect the Not to protect everyone. everybody else because whatever I touch with this glove and I touch something else, it's going to transfer. Mm -hmm. So do I say you don't need gloves? No. But don't rely on gloves to be your sole source for not uh, for safety. not infecting other people. Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things about gloves is once you have them on, and I've, I've been to places, they put a glove on, and they'll have that glove on all day, and they think they're great. Or if you're in the restaurant, if you go to a sub shop that will remain nameless, and they make your sub, they put it in their bag, your bag, and then they take your money, and then the poor next person gets their sub made after right. they touched your money. So in that case, I would use the glove to make the sandwich. I would remove the glove, take, take the money. That would be an appropriate time to quick do a hand sanitizer, re-glove, go to back to your next task. Um, one of the things that people I would probably say 95% of the time forget when I am going to wear gloves, I want to wash my hands first. And then when I remove my glove and I'm done wearing gloves, I'm going to go wash my hands again just to ensure that I don't have anything that could have come on to my surface, okay? And, uh, <coughs> Rob, not to make you put a glove on again, but can you slowly show the correct way to take off your gloves? Because so, we just talked about if you get anything on your gloves, you can transfer it. So if you pull them off crazy. I could fling stuff all over. Oh, so nice. first off, when you're going to go put on a glove, touching primarily by the cuff is the preferred method. You don't want to just, I know they come in a box like this. And, and then you get five at a time and then you wonder. Right. Um. And they do have some really cool gloves, the one safe gloves, where you can pull them by the cuff. But try to maintain minimal handling of your gloves except by the cuff. So once it's on, and I've done my tasks and my chores, I'm going to grab it by the cuff, okay? And I'm going to slowly, slowly pull it over itself and then discard it into the garbage, okay? And then once again, I'm going to go wash my hands. Perfect. Um, some of the other PPE that that you want to be. Oh, I have a oh, question. Yes. In case someone's thinking it but doesn't ask, <coughs> how often should we change our gloves? You should change your gloves if you change your task. Changing task, okay. Um, 
it's kind of like changing out on the food coat, changing out the, you know pans and utensils. You know, if you've had it for a, a period, I think for gloves, it's like if you've been using the same glove for like 15 to 20 minutes on a repetitive task, it's always a good method to change it. Um, they look soiled. They, if you look soiled, the main thing is, is is going from one task to another. Right. You definitely want to, or, you know, like preparing the food to. Raw food and then taking take money. Back. Or, yeah. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. So. If you're working in senior living in the kitchen, it'd be if you're patting burger patties or doing something with meat and then you go and you chop something up that's not going to be cooked. Right. Um, some of the other PPE that, that, you know, obviously are, are recommended because once again, it's to protect ourselves, um, use of like gowns, mm -hmm. uh, if you're around certain areas, even when you're working with chemicals, if you have glasses or goggles, mm -hmm. that will help protect getting into you, into your eyes and your face. Um, yes. masks, which are in a shortage right now. Yes. Um, even as far as there's shoe covering so you you don't track anything in from a an infected area mm -hmm. uh face shields other things like that um and yesterday we addressed it but in case you didn't join us yesterday there like rob said are ppe shortages um basically all of our ppe gear comes from china and quite a bit most of it. of it a lot of it and so um the coronavirus hit china first we know and knocked out a lot of that ability to do production. And then they also have the Chinese New Year for a couple of weeks. So the demand then in the rest of the country, everyone started getting this virus and it was spreading. So the demand skyrocketed while the supply dropped. And that's why we have this problem. So the most of these areas are up to back up to production. But the problem is, is that it's not a matter of making the gloves, for example, and then getting them on a plane and getting them here. Most of the time, those products are shipped um, on, put on a ship Tankers. in big, like semi-sized containers. So yesterday, our VP of Senior Living, Joe O'Brien, shared with us that while most of the time um, our our vendors or our, our people that we get the gloves from would be sending 80 a day, they're getting maybe a third of that. So the demand is down like 70% or more and the dem or the supply and then the demand is skyrocketed. So they are up and running, but don't feel like, oh good, we're all it's gonna be okay now. It is they're saying about a two month lapse before we get to that. We uh we did have a question about gloves. Yep. When cleaning a room, should you change your gloves when you change cleaning of different areas or when you change residents' rooms? When you change residents' rooms. And and I say that because you're in that resident room, so you're confined in that one area. That's one task that you're taking care of. Um, you would be more at risk for your own safety taking off that glove in there and putting on another. Ah. So, but you definitely want to make sure you take that glove off as you exit that room. Wash your hands before going to the next room. And another question: What if, if we were doing full PPE? Someone was in isolation. So, if they're using a gown gloves and a uh, face mask and or a goggles what would be the way to put it on so i didn't bring my donning thing or i would have shown them but so you would start by uh putting on the gown okay and the gown and then the gloves goggles mask no i take that back you put on the goggles mask foot protection and then your gloves are last Okay. And then in reverse, I'm going to take the gown and the gloves off mm -hmm. and then remove the rest. Okay. So going in and going out. And we have a resource. For we that. do have a resource. So we can and get we'll that have that on there. Get, get that to um, go. We've talked about hand washing. We've talked about the use of gloves. We have clean hands. Regardless of that, what else is the CDC telling us not to do? touch our face okay minimize that okay I know we all have nervous habits or allergies or allergies or you get, 
So we want to minimize the amount that we're, we're, we're touching our face, okay? And just talking about it, my nose itches. I know. Incredibly. Yeah, I know. So, <coughs> that's true. All right. Um, along that line, let's talk about uh, sneeze and cough etiquette, okay? Um, you know, most people will cough into their hands or sneeze, and then they'll go wash them, I hope so. So, but what is being recommended if you have to cough, uh, if you have a, a Kleenex or, you know, you <coughs> into the Kleenex? Um, if you don't, go to your elbow <coughs> and cough into that, okay? And then you still should try to get your cough pocket. Your cough pocket. Okay. <laughs> so, you, it was a so you want to try to keep from uh, aerosolization of anything from your cough or your sneeze, okay? Um, I don't know if you've ever seen a video of, of somebody sneezing or coughing in slow motion and, and blown up and all those mists and particles that go out. We want to minimize that, okay? Yeah. Yep. And once again, that's the time to call someone out when they don't do it. Correctly. Yes. yes. Geez, man, what are you doing? Trying to get us all sick? And yeah. So, yeah. don't be afraid to, to in a in a good way, help correct that action. Mm -hmm. So, all right. Well, we're going to jump into cleaning and disinfectants, okay? Because CDC recommends proper cleaning and disinfecting. Um, there's a lot of different cleaners out there. You definitely want to choose ones that are right for the surfaces that you're cleaning, the type of soils you're cleaning. Um, if we are going to be cleaning and then disinfecting surfaces, like for instance, high touch areas, which we'll get into, there is just a plethora of different type of disinfectants that are available, okay? On the resource page, we do have a list of, of several of the products that do have EPA registration against the corona-like virus. So it, no one has one that's actually 100% been proven against COVID-19, but any unenveloped viral efficacy like the human coronavirus, they're allowing that to be used, okay? Um, so we do have that available. Now, not all disinfectants are created equal, all right? I just can't take one and think that I can use it the same as others. So we start with some ready-to-use products, okay? And here's something you really want to pay attention to. And this is with any of the disinfectants. You want to know how do you mix it. So this one's ready to use. And you want to know how long I need to leave it on the surface wet. We call that dwell time, all right? Kill time. Kill yeah, time, dwell ready. time. Yeah. Um, and you got to be careful because, like, in marketing situation, like, for instance, this product, it says kill C, D, C diff in two minutes. So people think, oh, i got to leave it on for two minutes. But... If you were to read the labels and find out, well, what's it? What do I need to leave it on for the coronavirus? Oh, it's only one minute. Okay, so really be important to check that. And we have included the, the contact time on this list, so there's no no question on whether you can't read the real small print on there because it's it's pretty tiny. So if there's no C diff in the community right now, you don't have to leave it at that max at, at that at that max time. Okay. So. Rob, we did have a question about coughing etiquette. Okay. Uh, doesn't coughing into the crook of your arm put the germs there, and when you're carrying something, it will transfer? Well, that's that's a very good question. I, I'm going to say I'm referring a lot of this as what the CDC would say. I would I would say coughing in general, you always have the potential of spreading. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to minimize the amount of that. So if you were standing here and you had to cough and there was no um, tissue around, of all the options, the CDC See. is saying just coughing <clears throat> is not good. Right. Coughing in your hand is not, not good. good. So at least you're closing it in. Right. I, I don't know if that answered their question, but we're, right now we're trying to minimize any chance of, of that. Yeah, uh, it might not be perfect, up. but... It's the best, the best thing you can right. do in a lot right. of situations. Unless you don't like someone. That's when you cough in their face. <laughs> so. Is there another question? Second question on the cleaner you were just holding up a second ago. Yeah. Asking what that was. So this is a Clorox. It's a fusion disinfectant. Uh, it's been out for almost two years. The great thing about this is it does have a C diff 
claim, which a lot of uh, normal disinfectants that are quat based didn't have. Um, it, it's a it's a good general purpose. It, it's a little pricey at this time because it, it was designed to be used specifically for C diff. But it's a great this time of the this situation we're in. It'd be a good product to use. Um, can you use it on all surfaces? You you can now. People get weary because it's it's Clorox. It is it is a type of bleach based sanitizer or disinfectant, but it. If, I don't know if you can see, but it has two chambers that come down, and you have your your bleach-based product, and you also have a neutralizer-based product. And as they mix, it takes some of the harsh effects of bleach out of it, so it is oh, a little wow. safer. You'll get more of like a swimming pool smell, but not a heavy bleach smell. Okay. Can it be used on food surfaces? Well, if it is used on food surfaces, you would need to one let it sit for the appropriate contact time. But you would also have to go back over it with a potable rinse, okay? okay? With any disinfectants, if you plan on disinfecting, like for instance, we get a lot of questions, you know, what do I what do I need to disinfect my dining room tables? Okay. Well, first off, according to the CDC, they say anything food contact should be processed in normal procedures. But I know people are a little leery and they think, well, it's more out in general public. I want to disinfect them. And we have a wide variety of disinfectants. If you use them, you use them correctly, proper dwell time, you apply them to a clean, pre cleaned surface. These are not just cleaners, these are disinfectants. And you read the label, it'll say apply to a pre cleaned surface. What does that mean? That means I would have to clean it first with a cleaner, mm -hmm. and then I would go back over it with the disinfectant. Okay. I would spray this on, let it sit for one minute. Mm -hmm. but I'm not killing C. diff today. And then I would have to get fresh water rinse and go back over it. All yeah. right. Um, now you made me lose my train of thought with your question. Sorry. So, um, but we'll get back into it. Um, um, is bleach water mixture a good disinfectant for this virus? So the CDC recommends a third of a cup per one gallon of water of regular household bleach. Now, that's that's their statement for the public, okay? Um, I think what you're gonna see in the food code and what's listed from the CMS is they want an actual EPA registered product. Now, you can use the germicidal type bleaches or any bleach that actually has a disinfecting claim with an EPA registration, and they will have directions on how to mix it. What's so. the kill time usually? Is it longer for a bleach product? No, like usually that? bleaches are going to be right around a minute. Okay. Um, because bleach is a very aggressive product, um, so it does have a good kill properties, but bleach is also aggressive and will bleach out our black shirts and will eventually deteriorate finishes on surfaces. And you can't use it on other surfaces because of, you know, the fading and discoloration. Mm -hmm. So a uh, couple other ones that we have here, another ready to use, uh, the Purell Surface Disinfectant. This is an alcohol-based product. It does have the claim as well. Um, and I believe this one is a 30-second claim. So it is a, a, yes. a very good one. But once again, it has to be sprayed on a pre-clean surface. And that's for food surface, is that what we said? Food contact surface. It, this can be used for both. It does okay. have a rating for both, okay. all right? So it, it is a very ideal situation if you wanted to use this on your dining room tables. I've been using that, and it, it doesn't smell harsh. No. So usually if I use something at home and my kids go, oh, what is that? Because it's a bleach product in it. This one, they- This is alcohol-based in it. Yeah. And this can be used on, to disinfect your food contact surfaces without a potable rinse. Remember, anything that you want to use, read the directions that are stated on the label. Um, read the dwell time. We want to be diligent that we're leaving it on as long as it's rec or supposed to be left on. So, like for instance, this product here, a neutral lemon disinfectant, general purpose disinfectant, two ounces to a gallon. We've got it on the list. <clears throat> but it has a 10-minute 
dwell time, contact time. So you have to be diligent about leaving this on the surface for 10 minutes, okay? Is it safe to say that the longer the kill time, the less expensive it is probably? Mm, not necessarily. It, it goes more to the components that are built into this. Okay. Um, so I would say the majority of disinfectants that we use day in and day out are quat-based disinfectants, okay? okay. Um, it's just a, it's a safe component, safe on surfaces. Gotcha. It doesn't okay. have a shelf life per se like bleach does. Uh, it's not aggressive like, like bleach does, but it does take a little bit longer to do. Okay. And when, they, when these companies go to the EPA to prove that they kill certain microorganisms, viruses, bacteria, they have to prove it and they have to show how long it takes. So if I shortcut this and put this down and I only leave it down for six minutes, leaving it wet, then I'm not effectively taking care of all the kills that it should be doing. So, so 10 minutes seems like a long time. So what do you have to do to make sure it stays wet then? You minutes? may have to repetitively spray it on. Okay. If you're gonna use a, a towel in a bucket, you're gonna to have to make sure that it, it stays plenty wet. Okay. Um, and that's a good question because this is another thing that's very popular mm -hmm. are the disinfecting wipes, okay? And the disinfecting wipes are great when you wanna do a quick, just a quick touch sanitize, sanitize, which is 99.9% .9 of killing. So disinfecting, we're going for 100% kill and we're gonna go specifically for some of those nasties out there like coronavirus, okay? So that's the difference between sanitized and disinfectant. So the, the thing about wipes is people like to use, overuse a wipe. Mm -hmm. So if I was going to do uh, a dining room, I'm not going to do seven tables with a wipe because I'll have lost the, the product in there. So a lot of times I would say limit this to one table or four chairs. And you want to make sure that you are putting it on and not constantly rubbing it off. Pre-clean surface, once again, get it pre-clean. You're removing all of the gross soils that you see. And now we're going to go back and go after the ones we can't see. So just important. These are a lot like, uh, like hand sanitizer as far as I'm concerned. They, they're great, especially in a, in a, in a pinch where you, you don't have any product. You can wipe it down real quick, but make sure you're leaving it wet and you're not overusing these. Like at home. I use them on my door handles. Right, right. But don't do all the door handles with one wipe. Got it. Okay. That is good to know. Um, another one that, that we're getting quite a run on is the quat sanitizer. Okay. So this particular quat sanitizer that we sell to almost every one of our healthcare and restaurants has a third sink sanitizer, a food contact surface sanitizer. We run this at... 150 to 400 parts per million. That's the, the rating for it as a sanitizer. This particular product has a rating against the coronavirus, but you have to mix it at a heavier ratio. Okay. And the, the ratio is 0.78 ounces per gallon, which is roughly 550 parts per million. Okay. So if you on the safe side would mix this one ounce to a gallon of water, use it as a disinfectant, 10 minute dwell time for disinfecting okay okay but it does give you one product that you can use for food contact surfaces and also use in other parts as a disinfectant multi-use right yeah. uh one other thing i'm going to stress whenever you're using a concentrate that you have the proper labeled bottle you just can't write disinfectant on it or sanitizer on it and put it out there or god forbid you would not even have a label on it and just assume well, i know what's in there but Why you don't know that? what's in there no it, it is actually uh, uh a code regulation um and they have to the labels have to be specific with the ingredients it has to have site label or site words if there's any type of hazard like you'll see the pictograms that are on on uh Let's see if I got a pictogram on one of these labels. They may not, they're all, they're both neutral, so they may not have it. But if they had a pictogram and in a dilution, they still have a very bad health rating, they'd have to have a pictogram as well. Um, you will get cited. I've seen it more often in senior living than restaurants, but you do need to have the proper identification. Any product we sell, 
the TMA, the MultiClean. We even have Clorox labels for spray bottles. Contact your salesperson. They'll put the request in. We mail them directly to you. Awesome. Okay, so. we've got a couple questions. Okay. okay. What would you recommend to clean a resident room other than bleach and water? I would recommend probably, um, like our, well, are we talking cleaning or disinfecting? Let's just say cleaner. You can use a number of different cleaners to, to clean a room. Uh, usually you're going to use a neutral base cleaner whenever you're cleaning a resident room. Um, but as far as disinfecting, I would use some type of neutral base disinfectant, the neutral lemon, uh, the Q256 from MultiClean, the 256 works from uh, TMA, um, the uh, Millennium Q64. They're all good concentrated disinfectants. Um, once again, you just have to look at the dwell times for when you're doing that. You can use the fusion for those type of situations. It's perfectly fine. Um, it's just going to be a little bit more pricey because you're dealing with a ready-to-use type product. Um, once again, you can use bleach, but I will tell you, bleach is corrosive. Over a period of time, bleach can cause some damage to surfaces, and bleach is not a friendly. It's not a friendly chemical. It doesn't play well with others. Mm -hmm. And if bleach mixes with certain other products you can have a reaction that can be very dangerous. So. And um, any of these products they can have in more of a wall system? Because I would be afraid if I, uh, so, that maybe I, uh, especially in this time, maybe when staff are sick, so people are filling in, how are they going to know? How to mix it correctly. Yes. So yes. we do provide dispensing units when we put up a lot of our, dis or a lot of our concentrates. Uh, this particular product, along with the MultiClean products, have a closed loop system, so they can't pour it out. Oh. I don't know if you can see that. So they can't do the glug method. Okay. So it draws through a proportioner at the right dilution, and we make sure that's set properly. Gotcha. Um, like our quad sanitizer or some of the other disinfectants we have in a gallon container. Once again, we do a, a, a tube that goes into the buck or into the gallon through a dispensing unit at the right level. So they just have to push a button and it would just... Right. In food service, we always provide, you know, we make sure you have the, the test strips for like the quad sanitizer. Because this is a heavier dilution for disinfecting, we do have those available, but most people don't have them. So we just basically recommend going off the, the pour method for the... If these products were to go out of stock and were unavailable, what could people use instead? For disinfecting? Yeah. And I would go back to the CDC recommendations, which would say a third of a cup of bleach to one gallon of water. Bleach is probably going to be around. Right. I will tell you, looking at the list and prior to me coming here, uh, I got our current inventories and what we have on order. We Coming in the end of this week are almost out of most of these disinfectants. We have a few in. We are getting more in today, tomorrow, over the weekend, and we're getting some sufficient quantities in. Uh, just like everything else, we have had a run. Um, but if they get a case, it should last. It should it last. When, right. But so anything, like, is anything allotted right now? Right now, I, I don't think anything on the cleaner side is allotted. But there wouldn't be any reason for anyone to order more than one case of any particular disinfectant because they do last a while, especially on the, the concentrates. So if you consider if this was two ounces to a gallon and this is essentially a half gallon, you're going to make up 32 gallons of product. Of product so. And just so anyone listening is aware, when I said to, when I asked Rob if anything was allotted, what that means to us is if something is allotted, and you can get the list. It's always available on our coronavirus link. So go to the B2B, click on that. That's updated um, a lot faster than sometimes information to your sales rep even. But if something is put on an allotted list, that means usually there is only a certain amount you can order, as well as the fact that if you never ordered chemicals from us and something was allotted, you would not be able to start ordering it from us now. Since Rob is saying these aren't on, on an allotment list right now, that means that if you've never ordered, let's say, this product from us, you can when it's in stock. So Correct. I just wanted to, to make Correct. that clear because we do have um, some, we, and we do understand that there are shortages, 
we are very lucky that these right now aren't allotted. So when Rob says they are out of stock, that's not the same thing as, as an allotment. So I just wanted to clarify to let everyone know they can go out of them. Okay. Don't hoard though, guys. That's like people are doing with toilet paper and pasta in the grocery store. Order as you need it. If people are interested in spray bottles and labels, do we have those available? Talk mm -hmm. to a sales rep. They need to talk to the sales rep. The labels, we will provide at no charge. The spray bottles, we, we sell them as a complete set, trigger and we have a 32 ounce, a 24 ounce. Um, and we do have some that are sold separately. I will tell you, we have a good supply of them, but we are being very conscious that someone's not gonna put an order in for 50 of them when over the last year they bought five. So, yeah. so that'll be why. We wanna make sure, just like anything else, we wanna share it so everybody has an opportunity to, to get it. And once again, once you mix this up, you don't need 15 bottles of the same product floating around your building. So. Um, for quat sanitizer, um, someone's saying that they can't find on the label or on the SDS that it kills coronavirus. So it, it does not list it there. It does. So that was unknown before. Right. It, it does have a variacidal performance. And we can, I think what we'll do is we'll attach some of the efficacy sheets in on the, those links as well, those resources. Uh, a lot of that, they can only put so much stuff on a label. I mean, I don't know if you guys can notice, but the print is really, really, really fine. Really, really small. What do you think? Can you get a good shot of that? See how small that print is. And as a requirement, the manufacturers have to put a minimum amount on there. So not everything could be on there, but the products that are that these were EPA registered for will have 26 pages of efficacies. Mm -hmm. So they try to limit it down what they can put on there based on the segment of business that we use it in. But we do have eff efficacy sheets for all of the products that we can list. So if people want to go down there so they can Say, yep, there it is. So what does it have to say in order to be approved? It has to have, uh, and they'll say on there, uh, if, it, if it is effective against the human coronavirus and uh, any non-enveloped uh, viruses, then they'll approve that as acceptable right now. Because the coronavirus is a pretty the general. Co COVID-19 is the one that... Um, we, we, not, just we just found we're not going to get these specifics out. And I would bet, you know, it won't be long before they do it. It's just a much longer testing time that, that they have to prove that they can do it. But the CDC and the EPA are, are accepting if it has the same type of performance against these other viruses, we will accept that. Because we definitely want to get something out there that we feel can take care of the job. Because the ones you're talking about kills the corona family. Yes. So. And and other and other, and other yeah. variacidal. Gotcha. So. Any, Any other questions? We're These good. These are good. I mean, yeah. this is why we did this because we know it's new and and it, stuff. The the great thing about Martin Brothers is we have our solutions department, which is where we're at now. Originally, we were going to go to a healthcare facility yes. and try to go around and, and do real live in different parts. Uh, obviously, when we planned this two weeks ago, that sounded like a great idea. Right. Uh, now, and then on Friday, the 13th, they the said, Friday, no, no one's one going anywhere. So. Uh, no one, no so one. So now you get to come into our shop and we're going to do the best we can. So. And, and just so, I just want to let you guys know if, if you've, you've heard a little bit, but no one, I know it's a struggle to get all the information to everybody on the team. But on the 13th, on Friday afternoon, uh, CMS came out and they restricted all visitors, um, even family members, even if you are on hospice, the only way they will um, allow you to come in, they suggest, is if your loved one um, is at the end of life phase, which is even farther along than hospice. They also um, restricted volunteers and any non-essential healthcare workers or personnel when they refer to non-essential, it's basically if you are providing care to the resident, which would include cooking for them, CNAs, cleaning for them, that's essential care. Um, what that doesn't include um, are barbers, 
um, anyone that works in your hair salon. Could even activity be a chaplain. Director. No, activity directors. They allowed yep, they're, oh, they're allowing that because they are helping with other sure. care. Um, but that's why you wouldn't see me or Rob come in and help you. We can't. That's why you don't see our truck driver. I say I'm my picture out there with the big lines. <laughs> it's like a wanted sign. <laughs> but so I just wanted to let you know that's why, like Rob said, that's why we were gonna. Okay. Um, and as I was saying, uh, Mark Mothers has our solutions building. We have solution specialists. They live this world. So if you don't know who your solution specialist is, your salesperson does, and they will definitely get them involved to help answer any questions they can remotely. remotely right now but as we move forward and things start to get better and we're allowing visitors you know remember these guys can come in and make sure you've got your procedures where they need to be okay you've got the products you need to be and hopefully we won't be short memory that this happens again and we're stuck going i need this i need this i need this so and I would, I, I mean, Rob, wouldn't you almost suggest, just because we all know that even prior to this outbreak, staffing is an issue everywhere. Senior living, you're not alone. It's everywhere. everywhere. It would be good to consider having a training prior to outbreak season. Absolutely. So, and we're, we're available for that. Yeah. But just coming in and making sure, is everything correct? Are we using the right products? If we get neurovirus, what should we use? So you have that ready to have, staff. Have right your now. plan. And as you get new people in, that could be just part of a, a routine plan. Oh, so, this is a good time to say we will be releasing environmental services competency training. Absolutely. Do you want to share a little so bit So we have been that? working over the, the past few months on putting together a series of trainings. Um, I think there's seven or nine yeah. different trainings, uh, the different activities, whether it's videos, PowerPoints, reading, uh, reading okay. material. Uh, and they all will have competencies that will be attached to them, so you can use them with your staff. You can test them, make sure they understand it, go back, review where they missed. Keep Just one your... more tool to make sure everyone's on the same page. And not only, I mean, obviously, the number one thing is to make sure your, your team are trained, so they're doing everything to keep everyone safe. Um, environmental services, that's very important, as we're seeing for sure in this time, too. Um, but it's also good when we get back to state coming into the building for your annual survey, that's what they're looking for. Uh, does everyone have competencies? So you can print off the certificates, you can prove that you trained everybody. Um, some prove of the that they understand it, it's yep. in their files. So if they say, well, Rob never showed me what an NDS sheet was, you can say, yes, they did, and they took a test and answered everything right. So um, SDS and being able to look at an SDS sheet and, and read it is, is one of the things. Um, laundry is another. Proper laundry procedures, proper room cleaning. Sanitation. Sanitation, okay. uh, floor, floor care mopping. There's, dish. there's uh, dish room testing, temperature testing, uh, sanitation level testing. So. PPE, how to put it on, how to take it off. Correct. So a lot of good stuff. So. That was kind of a sidebar randomly, but just wanted to get that out there, that that will be available too. I don't know if this is, uh, is something that's happened to you guys, but this little coronavirus thing has kind of pushed a lot of projects and things to the side and taken not only front row, but the entire arena right now. Right. So we are real close to it. We are doing some final touches on it. We just want to make sure we have everything put together when we release it. Yep. So. Here we got another question. Yes. With wipes in short supply, can you quickly talk about towels, specifically chicks towels and the advantages and disadvantages of the different kinds? Um, can they be laundered how many times? Okay, so there's a lot of a lot in that question. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so chicks towels, there there's some different. There are differences to chicks towels. There's some that are disposable. Uh, there's some in the dietary side that come in a red bucket. You pour your sanitizer in, you use them as a sanitizer wipe. And you still have to make sure that your surfaces are staying wet for the proper dwell time. And when you're only sanitizing with quad, it's only a minute. Um, other towels, like for instance, the microfiber towels that we have here, um, when you use them, they have to be used for one task only. Okay. It can't be used for multiple tasks. 
it so you could use one to clean all the tables you and can, one for you, one table. So let, let me grab this, just since we're getting into it. Lucky for everybody, I, I don't know much about this topic, so I'm going to ask questions that people might have had. Or you're going to go, well, at least I'm smarter than that girl. <laughs> so here, here would be some good scenarios, okay? And I think hopefully everyone's familiar with the, the color-coded buckets, all right? We have a detergent bucket. So, so this is your cleaner. So your cleaner goes in here. I have a dedicated towel just for my cleaner, okay? okay. Now, I, I can keep it in the cleaner. I can wring it out and have it outside the cleaner, but it's only for the cleaner. This is our rinse bucket. Some are blue, some are gray. This is designated, so once I've cleaned, I want to get the residual detergents off a of food contact surface, and that's what that's when you use the rinse bucket. Once again, dedicated towel. And then I have my sanitizer bucket. My sanitizer in there, sanitizer towel. Sanitizer towel stays in the sanitizer when it's not in use. Stays in. That is okay. the rules, okay? You can't bring it out and fling it on your shoulder and walk around and have you, you been to my house when I cook? So you need to leave it in the bucket, okay? All of these can be laundered, okay? okay? As far as how long, how many washes. Um, these are microfiber, typically microfiber. They say anywhere from the brand 100 to 200 washings. Uh, microfiber does not need a lot of product mm -hmm. because of the nature of it. You use a little bit of detergent. You don't need bleach. Absolutely no softener. And you'll be able to, to reuse them. Um, the main thing to think about whenever you're talking about laundered towels is one task, one towel, not one towel, multiple tasks, okay? Um, we get a lot of questions about, can I use just a terry cloth towel for my quad sanitizer? And you can, but what has been proven in the industry is that the cotton materials in a terry can actually weaken the sanitizer, so we do have some of the quat safe towels that are available and a lot of places have gone to that okay um and we also have places that don't use the bucket they use the spray bottle for their sanitizer okay so and then what are the chick it's not chickpea is it what which towels are they talking about the chicks the chickpea chick okay the so towels. you're right and there's also like certain towels which are available for for sanitizing as are well. Are those the ones where the color changes? Right. Okay, right. so once so. it's not used, you shouldn't use it anymore, it's no color. Is that the way those work? That means it needs to be recharged. Got it. So, Recharges. so that's just like a wipe. You don't want to use that wipe for too much, but we can't tell when we're losing the effectiveness of that wipe on that certain towel we'd be able to tell. Okay. So, uh, and since I've got the buckets here, I'm going to do a quick rendition. Food contact surface dining room table we're going to clean the gross soils off okay okay cleaning towel cleaning bucket got it rinse purpose of a rinse is to get rid of the residual detergents got it so we have full effectiveness for our sanitizer leave and it wet this is one the kill time is a minute important. yep it's a minute on food contact surface as a sanitizer Okay. okay, so minutes done. Now what? Do we have to rinse again? No, nope. because it's a sanitizer. Ah, so. okay. All right. So clean, rinse, sanitize. Any other questions on that you got come up, Bill? If using quat for tables, do we need to use a fresh towel for each table? No. No. As long as the towel is left in the quat bucket. Because remember, we're, we're cleaning, we're getting the gross soils off first when we clean. We're rinsing to get the residual detergents off so the effectiveness of this quad is not compromised. And we leave it in there. Now, here's the common mis poor procedure. And I'm not going to pick on restaurants, but I'm going to pick on restaurants. So, this is a restaurant chain that I've been to. And this is the bus boy, and he comes out and he King takes everything off the table, sprays, grabs his towel, wipes it off, and on to the next table. Okay? Totally against what is supposed to be done. So, once again, clean, rinse, and if you're going to use a spray bottle, you spray it 
and walk away. Okay. Um, so hopefully we, we've kind of cleared up a few things on cleaning and, and sanitizing and disinfecting. Um, I want to touch a little bit on high touch areas because those are the most critical right now. Yeah. I mean, anything that you touch regularly. And Bill, if you want to come over here, we'll just do handles, huge high touch areas, light switches. Eric, would you grab those two things there? Telephone. I mean, people, I know we're getting into cell phones and those are high touch and it's probably good to disinfect those. But computer mouses, keyboards, remotes in your in your residence rooms or out in the main area. Uh, the rails, I wish we were in a your facility to show, but the handrails that go along that people are constantly touching. Those are the surfaces we consider high touch. The push bars coming into uh, a room or the or the poles to open up a door. Even I said to Rob, like the nurses station. Correct. Like I, how many people, hey, can you tell me blah 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 and, and put they their hands up and there. lean over the nurses station. So oh. those are those are the high touch areas. And now not that there is a specific you must do it every hour on the hour, but I would recommend at least twice per shift doing that. Even more if if you, it's really high touch. Okay. So um, because that's that's the way this thing's going to get spread. You know, I yeah I'm washing my hands, but I don't know if well we saw how Ernie and Joe did, and even Angie she had that all over herself. She would touch this light switch, and then I with clean hands would come over and touch it. And then, you know, maybe my eye itches and I rub my eye and the next thing I know I've got infected eye. So, real important to do our best. I know it sounds undaunting. Oh my God, think of all the high touch areas in a facility or in your house, for a matter of fact. Just do your best to be conscious of that. And when you are cleaning, cleaning them and, and disinfecting them, make sure you're leaving them wet. So even like when you were telling me, you make your kids go around and keep the surfaces wet for the amount of time that they need to be and wet. Play a little game. They get a wipe, and they they, they each go. We, we are almost like a train, and one does it, and then they go to the next one, and then the next person goes, and we have to do it a minimum of four times, like a just to make wet. sure we keep them wet. So. Yes, correct. We have one more question about quat. Yes, our quat is set up for a third sink, and we use on our tables after we use detergent. Do we need to disinfect after the quat or leave on for 10 minutes and not one minute? No, because you're sanitizing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the CDC doesn't recommend any special procedures for, for doing your laundry. So for those in the healthcare, you process your laundry the exact same way. Food contact surfaces, utensils, dishwashing, you process those the exact same way. Okay. Um, I know it gets confusing because people think that they have to disinfect their tables. Um, if they're doing and diligent with their cleaning and sanitizing after every use, they don't need to do that. Um, if they want to disinfect, like we said, some people just want to, and they still want to use the quat, they would have to hand mix this at the one ounce per gallon to be safe. And that's when it would have to be on for 10 minutes and then rinsed off with a potable rinse. Okay. Uh, what product do you recommend for handrails or other high touch surfaces? So it's, it would be kind of the same thing. Um, you could have your spray bottles with your, your neutral. I always recommend a neutral product because they're, they're less harmful for surfaces. Um, you can use wipes as long as you don't overuse the wipe and make sure that surface is staying wet. You can use the ready to use. When you use the ready to use, you're just spraying them, you're not wiping them off. Ah, now, hard to get used to. right, you can use these, this product here, but it is a bleach based product, and even though it's neutralized through this unique chambering system, it's still going to have a little bit more corrosive activity. So, um, what I see in the industry um, is a lot more of the wipes because it's a quick thing to do a, a handle. Uh, a couple uh, light switches. It's easy to go ahead and wipe off something as long as you know you're keeping it wet for that minute time that it needs to be. So, and I think uh, all of the wipes 
that I'm seeing on here are, yeah, they're, they're actually some that are rated as little as 15 seconds up to a minute. So, all right. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about, um, we went through kind of the, the, the food contact surface sanitizing, but I want to talk a little bit about the dish room. Uh, for those who sometimes they get confused because they think, well, I got this outbreak, I need to do things different. You just need to understand the proper procedures, okay? And most places are either going to have a low temp dishwasher or a high temp dishwasher. And it's, it's imperative that they know which one they have and how to make sure it's operating pro properly for sanitation. So when you have a low temp dishwasher, you're going to have three products, detergent rinse, sanitizer. The sanitizers are typically a chlorine-based sanitizer. You should have white test strips. And we are checking to make sure that we are getting 50 parts per million of chlorine in that final rinse to sanitize dishes, okay? They should be documenting that. I recommend every shift. And they also need to, to look at the temperatures because by food code, a low temp dishwasher must be a minimum of 120 degrees for both wash tank and rinse, um, unless it's stated different on the data plate. And I've not seen the data plate say otherwise. So a high temp dishwasher is going to use heat to sanitize. Okay. So we start with a detergent in a big wash solution that has a temperature regulation. It's typically 150 to, to 160. Okay. And it'll wash and it'll start to heat up the, the surface tension of my plates and glasses and and utensils and I go into my rinse which is a freshwater rinse the temperature must be a minimum of 180 degrees on the rinse gauge that's the incoming water okay and it'll run to ensure that the surface temperature reaches 160 degrees which is code there's a lot of confusion by that people say oh, I've got 160 degree test strips I need to have 180 degrees now the code states that the surface temperature must be 160. We now have these uh, non-reversing temperature discs, which take the place of a strip. They act like they're a plate, and they'll show the highest temperature that that reaches. And as long as it reaches 160 or greater, they are doing their sanitation. Once again, document that every shift, temperatures, sanitation. Any questions finishing no, out? No new questions. Okay, well. Um, oh, just had one. Okay. Yesterday it was stated but that this virus is killed by heat. How will low temp washers kill it? So. I have not, okay, that was yes. Okay, I haven't heard that. I, I've only heard that it can't survive over 133 degrees. Okay. But um, in high temp washers, in and I'm, I'm just going to go back to the CDC, that they claim that the normal procedures will not only remove and kill the virus. Essentially, you're removing most of the virus, and it's going like on a low-temp dishwasher. A low-temp dishwasher will fill with water, add your detergent, rinse, rinse, spray, spray, spray. All those gross soils go back down to the rinse tank. We drain that rinse tank, flood it, seal it back up. Fresh water comes in with the sanitizer, and we're just ensuring that the surface is sanitized, okay? Um, they feel that that is as an effective way to process all food contact surfaces, even this type of virus. So to be clear, people do not have to go to disposables if this were to come into their food. They, they do not have to. I mean, I know some are treating it like they do isolation, and you still have to transfer those utensils in a safe manner so you're not touching them and touching something else but as far as the CDC is concerned normal wear washing procedures are sufficient for this virus what if dishes are washed by hand in a three basin sink according to it, it I'm just gonna go right back the CDC just states normal washing procedures so once again you are washing that in Everything's contained in your wash sink, your first sink. You're effectively rubbing off all of that. You're rinsing it to get the residuals off, and then you're putting in the sanitizer, which is fresh 
sanitizer dwell time in the sanitizer a minute, mm -hmm. and then you air dry it. I think that's it. We really appreciate you guys signing in. We encourage you to share the link so more people can, can see this. Any future questions, you know, get with your salesman, get with, have them get with our solution specialists. Um, drop me a line. I'll be more than willing to help answer any questions. And we just want to, once again, thank you guys for all, especially if you're in a senior living community, thank you for all you do to take care of our seniors. It's such an important job. It's essential right now that we keep ourselves safe so we can continue to care for them, that we keep our seniors safe because they are a vulnerable population. So all of this training is hopefully going to help us just ensure that those safety precautions are done correctly and we are, are at the top awareness of what we're doing to ensure that we're doing everything correct. So once again, you guys have an incredibly hard job. We just want to thank you for what you do and for the time that you took to spend with us, to you, you to spend with us today. So, and thank you for the questions. This was the most questions we had, so good job, group. We Excellent. appreciate it. But yeah, like Rob said, this will be posted. So if anyone else on your team wasn't able to join, you can either sign in for 2.30. We'll be doing this again or this will be available for us to have for you to review again. All right, thank you, have a good day.